Good morning, family. Thank you for allowing us to be your virtual worship this morning. I'm excited because I want to share with you some things how to not give up as we go through this situation. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So I want to encourage you this morning through the word of God that we can make it. Hey, let's go into the worship service. I'm excited. Thank you for joining us again. How many of you know that he is a very, very good God? And we praise him for being the God that he is. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes this morning. And we're excited about what God is getting ready to do through the word of God. So let's worship the Lord together.
How many of you are turning your problems over? Yeah. I'm turning it over. Yeah. How many of you really believe that? Yes. He's working it out. Yes, he is. He's working it out. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to I need somebody just to worship. Just to worship. Stop worrying about it. Stop worrying about it. He's working it out. He's working it out. Just turn it over. Just turn it all over. Turn your problems over. Come on, just lift him up wherever you are. Begin to worship him. Not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry. Yes, yes. Oh, we praise him. Turn with me to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter and the 13th verse. Philippians, the fourth chapter and the 13th verse. And for many of us, this is a very familiar piece of scripture here for many of us. And if it isn't, we're going to make it very familiar to you today. Philippians, the fourth chapter and the 13th verse. I'm able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Oh, that brings a lot of shouting. I better say that one more time. I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Yeah. Amen. I, I want to just call to your memory, to your thought process this morning from I want to talk about hold on to your towel. Hold on to your towel. Let me, let me bring this into picture, into play, what I'm talking about. In a boxing match, if you've ever seen boxers in a match, they are, they're boxing, they're, they're throwing punches, and and oftentimes there may be one boxer who's throwing and landing more punches. And it's actually really doing some damage to the other boxer. He's hurting, he's sore, he's, he's been bruised. He goes back to the corner and they ask him, can you keep going? The doctor, was, the ring doctor will come by and ask him, are you able, can you keep going? And he shakes his head, yes, 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 I can keep going. And his, his own corner looks at him and tries to, uh, mend the wounds and put Vaseline and things on him and cold press, uh, compresses on his eyes because they're swollen and the, and the bell rings. He goes back out and they're at boxing again and yet the other boxer is getting the best of him. He knocks him down. They go for the 10 count. He's back up barely. And they keep boxing, boxing and his corner looks and, and the boxer has a lot of heart but a lot of heart will not get you through the match. And so his corner looks at him and realizes he's being damaged too much. And what the corner does, they take the towel and they throw the towel in the air. And the rest sees it and that means no more. We quit. And so he throws, the corner throws the towel because they care so much about their fighter that they don't want to see him get beat anymore. So he throws the towel in and they call the match. Oftentimes in this Christian race, we are battered and bruised 
by the circumstances and, and the, the carnal battles we deal with the darkness that we, we come up against. And oftentimes we want to throw in the towel and say, I quit. But I'm encouraging this morning, don't be like that boxer. Don't throw in your towel. Hold on to it. Hold on to your towel. Don't quit. And I'm here to tell you, this battle, this thing that we wrestle with is not flesh and blood. And this thing can cause wounds and problems and pain that sometimes along the journey we want to quit. But I hear grandmama crying out, that also I feel no ways tired. I've come too far to turn back now. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe I've come this far that he would leave me. Oh, We've got to recognize the battle that we fight. That this battle is not an easy battle. Paul says, I can do all things. I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul is dealing with the Philippian church. Because they have blessed him while he was in jail. Deal, he talks about their love toward him. They have sent him support. And he says, the only reason I'm taking the support, I'm accepting the support from you, because you're giving it out of love. He said, I wouldn't take it from the Corinthian church because I didn't want them thinking that I was preaching for money. So I wouldn't take it. Paul talks to them. He says, I've learned to be content in every circumstance that I've experienced. I've learned to be content. I've learned to, 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 to have a lot and not have a lot. I've learned to be content. I want to know, have you learned to be content? Because you may not have what you want. That's the key. Have you learned to be content? Paul says that I've learned. I've learned how to deal with things in life. Paul was content because he could see life from God's point of view. That, that's, that's, that's important. That's important to be able to see life from God's point of view. Because when you begin to look at things from God's point of view, church, it changes how you see things. See, life can get you to see some things they're going to be. And I'm here to tell you, when you start looking at life from life's viewpoint, you'll never be satisfied. You'll never be content. You'll always want more and more and more and more. Hey, see, when you see life, when you see life from life's viewpoint, when somebody else gets something new, you run and get something new. When somebody else gets a new car, you run and quit to get a new car. When somebody else goes somewhere, you're ready to go somewhere because you're looking at life viewpoint from a life view. Not from, see, when you start looking at things from God's viewpoint, it changes how you live. Yes, it does. See, when you look at it from God's viewpoint, you realize God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You realize that God will meet you where you need to be. And see, when you look at it from God's viewpoint, you get to change your verb, your verbiage. You can tell somebody, God, God, if you don't do anything else for me, you've already done enough. Because it's how I look at it. 
But when you're looking at it from, God, from the world's view, you'll never be satisfied. You'll never find peace. You'll never be content. See, see, see. Paul was focused on what he was supposed to do, not what he felt he should do. No, oh, that's, that's the key there. That's the key there. See, when you get to a point where you can be focused on what he wants you to do, what you're supposed to do, and not what you feel you ought to do, it changes how you deal with stuff. See, what it really comes down to, church, Paul had his priorities straight. I better say that again. Paul had his priorities straight. Paul had his priorities straight. And that's, that's the key. Do you have your priorities straight? Oh, yeah. That's why we deal with some things the way we do, because we don't have our priorities straight. Paul knew what he was supposed to be doing, not what he wanted to do. That's, that's the key. Getting your priorities straight. See, Paul had an attitude about being grateful for everything God had given to him. And when we can come to a point of being grateful, that's it, being grateful for everything God has done to the present moment in our lives. Paul, Paul had accepted this gift from the Philippian church because they willingly gave it to him. Paul says, I can do all things, I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But, but Paul, Paul wants you to understand, I'm, I'm not sitting here in a mansion. I'm not sitting here in a nice cottage. I'm sitting in bondage. And life can put us in bondage. Our battles that we deal with as Christians are not easy battles. And it's simply, no matter how much fight we have to go through, no matter how much struggle we have to go through, no matter what hits us on any side, no matter how many times it knocks us down to our knees, we cannot quit. We've got to hold on to our towel. Well, let me share three things that the Lord showed me through this one verse about holding on to you. How do we do that? Well, here's the first thing. We have to have an exalted attitude. Our attitude must be exalted. Our, our attitude must be an attitude of I can. Not I can't. Paul says, I can. I need some I can folks. I need to know where my I can people are. I can. He said, I can make it. I can do it. No matter what I'm going through, I can, I will. I'm reminded of that little red train, the story that says, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. The, the, nobody else could get the other rail cars up the track, but this little train, this little engine, looked at all the big locomotives. He said, I can do it. They said, no, you can't. He says, yes, I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. And they hooked up the, the rail cars in a little train because, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And they moved the cars up the track. I need somebody to have say, yes, I can. I, I can do it. I'm getting up out of my foolishness. I'm getting up out of my dirt. I'm getting up out of my bondage. I can't do it. I got to change my, I got to have an exalted attitude. See, see, the exalted attitude says, I can, I will make it. You see, you see, this attitude comes uh, because of the power we receive when we're in union with Christ. 
You see, when you're connected to Christ, it is sufficient. It gives you the power that is sufficient to do his will. And see, when you're connected to him, you can face the challenges that arise from our commitment to doing it. In other words, let me say this. When you are committed, when you're in union with Christ, it gives you the power to face the challenges that arise because you're committed to Christ. You'll never have the problem until you get committed. I better say that again. You'll never run into the challenges until you become connected with Christ. A union means we've connected. And once we hook up and we're together, that's when you're going to see things begin to happen in your life. And so the more you're committed, the more stuff you'll begin to experience. And so you have to have an exalted attitude of I can and I will make it. Paul says, look at my life. I'm in jail for preaching because I'm committed to Christ. And though I'm in jail, I've got an exalted attitude that no matter what happens or what I lose, I've learned to be content. That's his attitude. He said, I've got an exalted attitude. I am content. I've learned how to be content. And when I'm content, I can say I can do all things. Here's the second. Now do you need an exalted attitude to hold on to your towel. You need to engage spiritually. Well, that's the union part. Engaging spiritually, spiritually is to join with Christ. See, see, coming to church doesn't mean you're joined to Christ. Coming to church says you're coming because that's what you do. But joining with Christ is a lifestyle. See, joined with Christ is a lifestyle. That means I talk with him, I, 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 I listen to him, I, and the more I learn of him, the more I love him. And, and so I'm engaged spiritually. And engaging spiritually, again, is not just showing up on Sunday, but it's a daily thing. See, 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 if you, if you care about somebody, you really care about somebody, you don't just talk to them once a week and expect it to keep going strong. It's a daily thing. I wake up in the morning and say, good morning. In the afternoon, I call them up and say, how you doing? On my way home, I call them to say, how you doing? It's been a good day. When I lay down at night, I talk to him. It, I stay engaged, engaged spiritually. I, I, I want to learn more about him. I want to get closer to him. So that means I've got to spend time with him. See, because when I spend time with him, then I know his behavior. When I spend time with Christ, when I spend time with God, I know what God will do. Because what? We've got a relationship and I, I know how he operates. And when I know how he's going to operate, then I can tell somebody, I can do all things yeah. through Christ because Christ got my back. Got to engage spirit. You see, that's, 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 that's the thing that confuses us sometimes because we think coming to church is the only engagement and then six days out of the week we're going through what we're going through. But I'm here to tell you, if you really want to make it through all the days of the week, you've got to have a daily walk with Christ. You've got to walk with him. You've got to talk with him. Paul says, I can do this. I can be content because I know who he is in my life. I know who Jesus is. 
I've got a relationship with him that I can be content in whatsoever state that I'm in. See, when I engage him spiritually, I can rest easy at night because I know he's watching over me. I need you to hold on to your child this morning because there are times as Christians that we go through that we think at times that the night will never turn to day. And if you haven't, you will encounter some things that even make you question yourself at times because it's unbelievable on the, on the issues and, and the pain that you're, you're, you're going through. But I'm here to tell you, you cannot be knocked out for the count. Don't throw in your towel. So I need you to have an exalted attitude. Be engaged spiritually. Here's the third thing I found in this text. Endure physically. See, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Strengthen means to put power in. Somebody going to catch that in a minute. Strengthen means he's putting some power in me. See, I'm not like that old cartoon Popeye where the only time I get my strength is when I open up a can of spinach. I'm not like Superman. That I got this, this, this x-ray eyes and, and I'm faster than a locomotive and, 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 and I can jump, leap tall buildings in a single bound. There's something about the strength that God puts into us because of our relationship that lets us know I can take a licking, but I keep on ticking. You can knock me down, but you can't knock me out. Strength is, is like that old Rocky movie. And it's his, his, his corner says, stay down, Rocky, stay down, Rocky, stay down. But Rocky keeps getting up. And that's what we keep doing at Christmas. We keep getting up. Every time we fall, we get up because he keeps putting some strength in us. Because believers are in Christ, he infuses us with strength to sustain us until we receive some new provisions. See, the reason why you're still here, because he's strengthened us to keep us in perfect peace until he makes a change. Oh, yeah, 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 see, 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 that's why you've been able to endure this pandemic, that's why you've been able to endure financial situations. That's why you've been able to endure sickness because God is strengthening us to sustain us until we receive some new provisions. That's how you made it this far because God keeps strengthening you. That's why some folks are looking at you that don't really know your story and they're trying to figure out how in the world they're still making it. How in the world they're still going for it. How in the world they still have a praise on their lips. How in the world do they still have a smile on their face? Because I'm holding on to my towel. I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I shall not be moved. He says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Paul says he keeps putting power. He keeps strengthening me so I can make it. And whatever it may look like to you, I've learned to be content. Oh, beloved, that is the key, learning to be content. That's it. It doesn't mean God is not going to do anything else. It means if he doesn't do anything else, I'm okay. If you don't open up another door, I'm okay. If I don't see another blessing, I'm okay. You're strengthening me because here's the key. Satan wants to make you weak. He wants you to quit. 
He wants you to say, it's not worth it. Look at what you're going through. Look at what you're dealing with. But Satan doesn't really understand that if I just hold out a little while longer, my change is on the way. Your change is coming if you would just hold on to your towel a little while longer. Breakthrough is on the way. Hold on to your towel. Don't throw it in. Don't quit because it looks bad. Hold on to it. Your change is coming. Your change is coming. Don't let this pandemic scare you. Hold on to your towel. Change is coming. It's a new day. Your change is coming. He is strengthening you that you can go through whatever you're going through and know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why you've made it, church. Beloved, wherever you are, that's why you've made it this far. Because you have a connection, you have a union with Christ that he keeps strengthening you. When you're weak, he is strong. When folks think you ought to be out of here, you're still here. Why? Because I, I won't let this towel go. I'm not throwing this towel in. I've come too far. He's brought me through too much. I'm holding on, waiting for my change to come. I'm going to make it. I'm going to be all right because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God says, I've been putting some power into your life. That even in your darkest moments, you'll brighten the situation. He says this, he says, look, no matter what forces come up against you, I've put something, I've been putting some strength in you that you can walk through it. You can walk through your fire and come out like pure gold. Whatever you've gone through, whatever you're going through, he says, I want to strengthen you. I want to exalt your attitude. That's the key. That's the key. That's the key. I can make it through. No matter what it looks like, no matter what I'm going through, I will make it through. In fact, you have made it through. Look at your life this morning. Look at what you've been through, what God has brought you through, what God is sustaining you through. Can't nobody do that but Jesus. He is the one because of your relationship with him. So you're a living testimony. I made it through because of my attitude. I exalted my attitude. I connected with Christ. I engage him spiritually. He strengthens me because of that. And because of that strength, I'm able to endure physical things that have come up against me that it would knock out most anybody. But but since I'm connected to Christ, I'm still standing. You're standing here. You're standing where you are. You're sitting where you are simply because of your exalted attitude. When others try to get you to throw in the towel, throw in the towel, quit, quit. It's never going to change. You said, I got to hold on to it. They didn't understand. They wanted you to throw in the towel, but you held on to it. And look at you today. You're a living testimony of what God can do when you hold on to your towel. Oh, I praise God. And I hope you're holding on to your towel this morning. I pray that you hold on to that towel. Don't let it go. Don't throw it in. Hold on to it. It's not over until God says it's over. It's not over. The best, your best is yet to come. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for you. But your best is yet to come. I want you to believe that. I want you to receive it this morning. Hold on to your child. 
This battle is not over. But you will not lose the war. Hold on to your battle. Hold on to your towel through this battle. Oh, I thank God for you. I praise God for you. Wherever you are, just make that commitment of having an exalted attitude. Change your attitude about your situation. You need an I can attitude. I will attitude. Connect. Engage spiritually. Connect more with Christ. Create that union with Christ so he can strengthen you and impart, impart into you strength. Oh, if there's someone out there right now, wherever you may be, if, if you don't have a church home first, we invite you to become a part of the Agape family. You have our address, our website number, our email. You can just you can put it online. Say, call me. I want to be want, want to know more about Agape. We'll be glad to pray with you, get back with you. Secondly, maybe you don't know who Jesus is, and God has led you to this virtual worship message. I got to make some changes, Pastor Witt. I want Jesus. I need Jesus this morning. How do I connect with Jesus? Well, the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's simply, you've got to accept and believe that Jesus is the son of God and that Jesus died for your sins. He took your place upon that cross. He died for your sins. If you believe that, you accept that finally. The second portion of that is to to invite him to come into your heart. And I really mean what I said, invite him. He will never come until you invite him. He's knocking at the door. He says, if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Jesus, will you come into my life? I want you to become my savior. Lord, come in. I, I receive you. I, I want you. I need you to come into my heart. And at that moment, he will come in. And as you build your relationship and begin to work, engage with him, he begins to change your life, your thought process, your lifestyle, everything about your life. He begins to change because of the relationship. Oh, we're praying for you as you confess your sins and confess your direction that you want to change. Again, contact us. We, be, we, want to, we want to make contact with you, pray with you, and connect with you. We thank God for you. Let's pray. Eternal God, we are so grateful for your word. Thank you for being our Savior, our blessed Savior. Thank you for coming into our hearts, residing within our home, or, or the heart of our home, and making a difference. God, thank you for our new attitude, our exalted attitude. Thank you for the relationship we have with you, how you strengthen us to endure the circumstances of this life. God, we thank you for the newness of making some things new when we became a part of your family. God, we honor you. We thank you. God, we're praying for our national leadership. We're praying for direction. We're praying that they will truly listen to you and move in your way. God, do whatever you need to do. For you said, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. God, we pray now for our state leadership, our our city government, our county government. We pray for frontline workers. We pray for our teachers. We pray for everyone. We pray for those who are dealing with COVID-19. God, we pray now that we can be obedient to what 
the law says about wearing a mask and distancing that. And God, we will be patient. We will not fall into that trap of that we just got to get back into the service. We got to get back together because we're front, we know we're frontline workers for the for the for the world for the for God's word. But God, we got good sense that you've given us to be patient. Because our relationship is about one on one. It's an individual thing. Thank you for your word going out through the airways. Because it's just as powerful as if we were in person as we receive it through the airways. God, we know, I know you're doing a new thing. I know we're not ever going back to the old normal, but it's going to be a new normal. And God, we receive it right now. God, we realize the best is yet to come. So God, we honor you. We stay focused and we stay patient, waiting to hear you move and hear your word. God bless us. Bless those who are watching wherever they may be. Bless their homes in a special way. Let your anointing power be upon their life and protect them wherever they may go. God, we honor you. We thank you. Now may the grace of God bless you and keep you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore, wherever you may be wanting to just say amen and praise God. I love you. I'll see you next week. God be, God be a blessing to be in your life. We're praying for the blessings of God to be upon you wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you touch. We pray now that his blessings will come forth. God bless you.
Family, thank you so much for taking the time out to join us this morning as we serve God, we worship God through virtual worship. I'm praying that the Word of God has encouraged you and will keep you holding on to your time. God bless you. God keep you. I hope to have you tune in next week as we share God's Word again. Be blessed this week.